Father God, we, we love you and we are grateful to gather in your house to worship, to sing songs, to read scripture, uh, to hear your word preach. God, we, we know that you are with us and we pray that you penetrate our hearts this morning. God, help us to focus on you and uh, rid the distractions of our lives. God, we want to give you everything that we have today in worship. There are many requests that we have, God, in, in, our, in our bulletins and in, on our prayer requests um, or on our prayer wall. God, we know that there are some that are unspoken, and we lift those to you today. And that's that you provide peace and comfort in these situations. God, be with those around the world who are worshiping with you as well this morning. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Now, would you join me as we stand and sing joyfully? Number pin number seven, joyful, joyful, we agree.
pray together. Now, Father God, we love you again, and we thank you for this time of worship. God, as we enter in a time of, uh, of offering this morning, God, we, we thank you for the many blessings that you give us. And God, as we give back to you, I pray that we give out of our hearts and give out of obedience this morning. Use it to um, and be used for the glorifying of your name. We love you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. At this time, if the children would please make their way forward to the children's sermon. Are we in November? And there's a really special day coming up. What is that? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And what is Thanksgiving? Yes, thanks. Things that we're thankful for. So the beginning of the word Thanksgiving is thanks. So we have things that we're thankful for, and we give thanks, right? What are some things that we give thanks for? Family. Your family. Yes, a house. What else? Food, definitely. Water. God, yes. Jesus, our salvation. So, during this time of year, I like to write down things in my calendar that I'm thankful for. Okay? So, I have a lot of the same things that you have. I have Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit and salvation and my health. And I'm thankful for heat, because it's been kind of chilly lately, don't you think? And I'm thankful for my husband and my family and my church. So things like that that I'm thankful for, that I can give thanks for in my life. So although we sit around a table and we give thanks over food, there's a lot more to Thanksgiving than just that. So... You know, the Bible talks a lot about why it is important to be thankful. God wants us to live with joy and to be contented for those things that we have in our lives. This also keeps us from wanting things that we don't have or that we don't need. And we want to appreciate the blessings He has given us. So, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. So that's saying that no matter our circumstance, no matter what's going on, we always have something to be thankful for, even if it's just Jesus Christ, right? And that we live for Him and we can be joyful in that because we know that He has a plan, right? All right, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for these children, Lord, and I just ask that as we go through this season, Father, that we're thankful each and every day for your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to be thankful day in and day out for each and everything, from school to transportation and heat and our families, Father, and um, Lord, most of all, we love you. In your holy and precious name I pray, amen. Okay, I'm going to read out of Colossians 3, verses 15 through 17. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through songs, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in the word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the Father through Him. Now if you would stand and worship with us.
thankful that you saved your son Jesus to die on the cross for us, Father. Lord, during this season of Thanksgiving, Father, I just ask that in all that we do, we can give you praise and glory and thanks in a joyful way that shows us, that shows you that we are loyal to you, Father, and that you are everything to us. Let everything that we do be for your glory, Father. Lord, be with Donovan as he brings your word this morning, Father. Help us to be open and ready to hear what you would have him say, Father. It's in your holy and precious name we pray these things. Amen. Thank you, worship team, for leading us this morning. I uh, did want to mention um, that uh, Peggy and Eddie are celebrating their 30th wedding anniversary this weekend. And so um, I hope that he is uh, will eventually go back and see this so he can hear this comment. I don't know how Peggy's put up with Eddie for 30 years. <laughs> um, but she has been faithful to the Lord in doing so, I guess. So. <laughs> uh, no, uh, just be in prayer for them this weekend as they, as they celebrate. And um, just what an accomplishment and what a, a great um, honor. Uh, that is, and, um, and so we want to celebrate that with them uh, this weekend. Um, also, I wanted to, to preach to you um, from the floor this morning um, just to say, hey, we're, we're all in this together. And um, uh, what, I, what I want to talk to you about today is, is something that, that I struggle with myself and that I constantly need encouragement and to be held accountable um, to those things. And we'll dive into those in just a minute. But I was asking Elizabeth, I was like, you know... You think it's okay if I preach from the floor? Like, you think anybody's going to be upset with me? And she's like, "Well, you know, the only thing that that I don't I don't know I don't know if everybody everyone will be able to see you." And uh, so I looked at her and I was like, "Elizabeth, I'm I'm six foot seven, um, three hundred and some odd pounds. We don't need to mention. Um, kind of hard to miss, uh, even even up here." So. Um, I guess living with me for so long, she forgets that how big I am. I don't, I don't know, I don't know. But uh, no, I'm excited this morning to to share with you uh, what the Lord has laid on my heart um, this morning. But what I want to do is I want to go back and and talk about. Eddie started a um, series on Thanksgiving last week, and we're going to look at uh, basically we want to look at Thanksgiving and being thankful and the word praise um, together this year that we. We feel like those go hand in hand as we're being thankful for things that we are praising um, something in return. And so last week, Eddie talked about the importance of um, showing acts of praise. Um, Number one, praising God and being out loud by saying, hey, God, thank you for this and showing our appreciation and showing our thanks um, to God out loud. Um, And also, we not only needed to do that with God, but we also needed to extend that to others. And so, um, showing thanks to other people and and, and telling them out loud, sending a text or giving them a call or uh, seeing someone face-to-face and thanking them um, to show your appreciation to them. And so, what I want to continue on this week is is that that thankfulness and praise aspect of this, but but what I want to do is, is talk about um, obedience and how when we obey God and how we obey his commands um, that we become more thankful and so before doing that um, I want to share with you I'm going to skip Thanksgiving for a minute and go on to Christmas and I'll come back I promise um, but one of the things that I really dislike about this time of year or this season is um, the obligation that one feels in giving somebody a gift that like where, where somebody gives a gift to you, you feel the obligation of like, man, I really need to return the favor. To show my thankfulness and to show my appreciation for the gift that I just received, I've got to give you a gift greater or of equal value than the gift that you've given to me. All right? Uh, I remember when Elizabeth and I were, um, when we were young and um, broke and just got married, and I'm sure some of you have uh, dealt with that before when you're first getting married and have no money and you really don't know what you're doing with life, but um, that's where we were. And then, so uh, we really, we lived in a house, um, an old house that we were renting that had oil heat and oil heat's expensive and I'm stubborn and um, kind of tight a little bit with money. And so I didn't want to pay for that, okay? And um, so we didn't. 
And so one winter, we were in this old house, and it's, it's 30 degrees inside the house. And we're like, we have a heated blanket, and we have a little space heater, and like, Elizabeth would get up in the morning, and she'd run and take the space heater into the bathroom and turn it on, and then come back to bed under the heated blanket, and then when it was time to go shower, she'd run in there after it got warm, and she'd shower and then bring it back, and it was just a mess. And so like, the church at that point like offered us to pay for our, <laughs> to pay for our heat. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 like literally, I, I, can, I can afford it, I just, I just don't want to. Um, and so, <laughs> uh, so I eventually um, uh, bought heat. But that's really just to tell you how, how, how broke we were, how poor we were. Um, but like we had all these friends who were just getting married or who were single, um, and they were giving us gifts, especially we just moved in our house, and I'm like, man, like I really want to give them something in return to show my thanks for the gift that they just gave me, but I don't know how I'm going to do it. And so I I always hated that feeling of like, man, like I feel like I have to get them something because they gave me something else. Or um, you're talking about like anniversary gifts. Like Elizabeth and I talk about it every year. Like we're not going to get gifts for each other. Like we're just not like we're we're basically spending our own money to to gift them, you know, with with that. And and so we talk about it every year. We're not going to get gifts for each other. But we always get gifts for each other, right? And so you're always like, but, but mine's going to be better than hers. Like, I've, I've got to be better than hers. If I want to stay married for 30 years, my gift's got to be better than hers. Um, or, you know, we think about um, parents and grandparents' gifts. Like, if you're a parent and it's Christmas time, like, grandparents aren't going to out, they're not going to outgift me, all right? Like, that's not going to happen. Um, and so we have all these scenarios where we feel like we have, we're obligated to give back in return of what we receive. Um, and how often do we do that in our spiritual lives? How often do we do that with God? That we feel that, that in our relationship with God, that to, to be able to show thanks that we've got to give something to God and that He will be appreciate, appreciative of us. But the truth is, is God gave us salvation through Jesus Christ. And that's a debt that we can never repay. But we continue to try to work for it and try to be thankful to God and try to show that our thanks, like we're going to pay that debt off. But the truth of the matter is we can't. We can't pay for the debt. Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe, except we're never going to be able to pay that back. We also try to do this daily. When, when God blesses us, like we try to give him something back in return. Like we, we, we're, we feel obligated almost in giving God something back. Well, what that does is it ties us down in our faith. And God doesn't, want, uh, God doesn't want thankfulness out of obligation. Instead, what God wants is for us to be obedient to Him. That's enough. And so when we are obedient to God, we show God thanks. We automatically do that. This is what His Word, his word teaches on, is that if we need to obey His commandments, um, and we need to love Him, and that we need to love others, and so when we give God our obedience, that's when we're showing thankfulness to God, understanding that we will never repay the debt that we owe Jesus. We will never do it. And God is okay with that. He just asks us to be obedient. And so this morning, are we giving, are we giving thanks out of obligation? Or are we giving thanks out of obedience? The act of obedience is showing thanks and praise to God. I'll say that again. The act of obedience is showing thanks and praise to God. We're going to look at a, a, a passage in, in Colossians chapter 3. Uh, Maggie read 15 through 17, and that's where we're going to focus this morning, uh, just for a few minutes. Um, and let me read it again. It says this. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. And so Colossians chapter 3 is, um, is a passage of basically putting on the new self. Okay, when you become a follower of Christ, when you become a Christian, then you are a new creation. You are a brand new person. God has taken the old self and has thrown it away and made you a new a new being. 
And so that's what this passage is, is talking about. And, and I'm, not, I'm, I'm not here to say, listen, I know that everybody is here as a Christian. I don't, I don't think that that's true. And it, it may be, but it, but it may not be. But this passage is for the Christian. But it's also for the non-Christian. To say that if you're here this morning and you're not a follower of Jesus, that's okay. But here's what, here's what being a Christian is. And here's what it looks like. And this is what you're about to experience if you do become a follower of Christ. For those in here this morning that, that are followers of Jesus, it is a, um, a, almost a mandate for us of like, this is what we should be doing with our lives. This is what being a Christian looks like. And so that's what Paul is covering in, in all of uh, Colossians chapter 3. Um, he's telling us what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Um, and, and through 15, and, 15, 16, and 17, of what I want to focus on this morning, what I want to do is I want to give you four ways, if, if we are to, if the act of obedience is showing praise to God, then I want to give you four ways of what it looks like to be obedient to Christ. And if we do these four things daily, then we will see us becoming a new creation, and we will see us being more thankful to God for the blessings that He gives us. Okay, so in verse 15 again, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you are called in one body and be thankful. So what is peace? We come into this, this, um, this Thanksgiving time of year, um, Christmas time of year, and, and the word peace is brought up a lot, especially during Advent season, we think about peace. Um, during Christmas time, we think about peace. Um, during cold weather, um, when everything is still and quiet, we think about peace. Um, sometimes snow does that for some people. Um, the beach may do that for others. Um, and the birth of Jesus. When we, when we hear these things, we think of the word peace. But what is biblical peace? And how do we obtain it? Uh, the, the word Je- Jehovah Shalom in Hebrew is um, the Lord of peace. The peace of, of Christ. In stillness, in the calm, we experience peace. Uh, a couple years ago, what, a couple years ago, ten years ago, I served in um, in, in Sweden uh, on missions when I was in college. And um, when I went to Sweden, it was in the summertime. And, and Sweden, uh, Uppsala, Sweden, where I was, is almost on the same level as Anchorage, Alaska. And so the summer times are gorgeous, seventy degrees, seventy-five degrees, sunny. Um, and it pretty much stays daylight for almost 24 hours. In fact, there's a, there was a day that I was there that they celebrated midsummer, which was 24 hours of sunlight, okay? Um, unfortunately, when the summers are that great, winters are the opposite. And so we, 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 we hung out with a team when we were there. We worked with a team that was there year-round um, that lived in Sweden, and um, basically they said that there could be snow on the ground from like uh, August, September, October, up until March, actually up until May. So right before we got there, like the snow melts. And so um, it's complete darkness. It's cold. In fact, Sweden has the highest, highest suicide, right, excuse me, suicide, suicide rate um, in, in the world. And I can imagine, number one, it's dark spiritually. Only 4% of the people in Sweden go to church. Um, and it's, it's just dark and cold. And, and miserable, I'm sure. Um, but he told us a story of one day as the, um, it was starting to get closer to summertime. There was still snow on the ground. It was still really cold. Um, the, they basically travel in Sweden. is on bicycle, and that's just how it is. Um, and so he, the guy that's over our project was uh, telling us a story that he saw a lady riding her bike through the snow, and she had to be 75, 80 years old, riding her bike through the snow. And then the sun kind of peeps through the clouds and she stops again it's like 25 degrees outside but she stops and she looks at the sun and she just does this and just takes it in I imagine that when I when I hear that story is that is what peace looks like through the darkness through the cold we stop and we get a glimpse of the sun, and we take it all in. That's peace. Peace is stillness. 
um, its pieces to calm. In our relationship with Christ, we must find and experience peace. And we do that by experience solitude. So how do we find solitude? I want to give you a couple examples of how you can do that. How, you, how can you find solitude? And solitude, all that is, is finding a place where you're by yourself and that you're spending time with God. All the distractions of this world and all the things that are, that are getting in the way, we get rid of them. Okay, so solitude is finding that place. So I would encourage you this week and for every day of your life, if you can, solitude is, is maybe not an everyday thing. Um, well, it is. Just finding, finding a couple minutes a day where you can kind of be on your own. No kids, no spouses, no work um, distractions, just being by yourself. But how do you do that? I would encourage you to find your favorite spot. I try to, at least once a week, um, if I can, and it doesn't always happen, but it, it, I, I, what I try to do is I, I try to go to the field on a farm in my hometown that my parents own. I try to just get out there, ride a tractor around for a little bit, and it's just me and nothing else. On a daily basis, what I try to do is, is to, <laughs> I used to do this when I was younger too, but I wait till everybody leaves the house. Luckily, being a pastor, I get I kind of have banker's hours, and so Elizabeth, Elizabeth and Brooks are going on to daycare and work by the time that I um, get up and move around. But I try to find that time in the morning where I'm just by myself, and there's nothing else going on in my life to distract me. And so find that quiet place. Find your favorite spot. And what I want you to do in that time is to, to be quiet and to look around and listen. The cool thing about God is, and, and I've been taking a missions class this, this uh, fall, um, and, and what I'm learning is that ha, the question come up, like, how does God speak to us? And God speaks to us through our senses. He speaks to us through our, through our feelings, through taste, through smell, um, the things that we hear, the things that we feel. And so when you're in that quiet space, think about those things. What do you feel? What do you hear? What do you see? You know, what, can you, what can you smell? What's going on in your surroundings? And so find time daily to spend 15 minutes, 30 minutes, just alone with God by yourself with no distractions. If you want to show thanks to God, experience Him in solitude. In verse 16, it goes on to say, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And so giving God the first portion of your time. He says, let the word dwell in you. I've been watching a series um, from Chip Ingram. Um, it's called Balancing Life's Demands. And so Elizabeth and I noticed that we were both just kind of running around all the time and forgetting things and not, not very focused at all in life. And so we started watching this series together. Um, it's been very helpful for us. Um, but the single most important thing, and Chip Ingram mentions this in, in, his, um, in his devotion, is that the single most important thing that you can do for, for your life is to learn how to have a quiet time. And so if we want to be thankful this season, then we want to find time every single day to let the word of the Lord dwell in us. And that means reading scripture and let it speak to you. Okay, and you can do that by having a quiet time. The word can't dwell if we don't read it. And so we must read the Bible. Uh, we must learn how to study the Bible. We, we need to learn how to spend time in prayer through the Bible. This semester, I have been, um, I've been setting goals for myself in school, and, and Eddie's kind of been supervising me over that, um, and it's a, it's a really neat class that basically just allows me to, to set a goal of things that I need to accomplish in life or I feel like that I should accomplish, and, and Eddie's there holding me accountable and, and helping me through that, and that's been, that's been a really good experience for he and I um, this year, and what I noticed was one of the goals that I set for myself is that I wanted to be healthy holistically. And so basically that I wanted to I wanted to be healthier physically, I wanted to be healthier spiritually, 
and that's something that I wanted to work on. And I got to like November, and I'm about to turn this thing in. We had a meeting last week, and I looked at these goals that I'd written in August, and I failed all of them um, as far as holistic health goes. Like, I did not start exercising like I said that I was going to. I did not start eating better like I said that I was going to. And so like three weeks ago, I'm realizing, man, I'm a failure. <laughs> and so, um, so Eddie was like, hey, listen, you might have failed it, but here's what we discovered. Um, and, and he was right, and I, I, was, I agreed with him to say that I like discipline. I did. I was being lazy. And so three weeks ago, I started like just taking away all of these things of not drinking soda anymore and making sure I'm eating a little bit healthier. And so the last three weeks has been really good. Is that my timer to, to stop? That's <laughs> uh, enough. <laughs> uh, but what I realized is that I just wasn't being disciplined. And, and I, was, I was doing these things. So a couple weeks ago, I, I started doing that. I started, um, started drinking water only and started eating a little bit better. And I feel so much better. Um, but again, I realized that I just wasn't being disciplined. And if we want to spend time with God and let the word of God dwell in us, then we need to have a quiet time. And for us to have a quiet time, we have to be disciplined to do so. In the same way, like if I, if I don't need to eat fatty foods and fried foods and things like that, then I need to be disciplined not to do that. If I want to grow in my relationship with God and, and have a better understanding of who he is and read his word, then I've got to be disciplined to do that. And so what I'm encouraging to do, you to do is to take 15 minutes a day and spend time just reading God's Word. And so how do you do that? Well, set a time. 15 minutes. The first thing that you do when you get up, do it. Some of you may not have those 15 times. The best time that you can give is at night. Good. Do it at night. But set 15 minutes aside and start reading the Word of God. And as you do so, start reading. Observe things that are in the text. Being like, I have no idea what that word means. Good. Write it down. What does this phrase mean? What am I reading? Write all that stuff down, okay? And as you do so, observe what you're reading. The next thing you should do is try to interpret what it's saying, okay? Look up those words you don't know. Look up those phrases you don't know and try to find answers. Seek answers to what you're reading and being like, what is God saying here? What is the purpose of this text? And then the last thing you do is apply it to your life. As you're reading it, okay, God wrote this for a reason. Uh, the Bible is absolutely can apply to our life today. So how do I apply this to my life? And so take those things and say, God, what are you saying to me right now? How can I apply this to my life daily? And as you do these things, you will experience God in a new way. And I encourage you to start with 15 minutes. And then I encourage you to let it grow for 30 minutes. And see what God can do in your life over the next month or two months from you taking time and reading His Word. If you want to show God thanks, read the Bible. And then also in 16, it goes on to say that we should meet together, uh, that we should teach one another, that we should admonish one another, meaning that we should urge each other that we sh and do this in wisdom, that we should sing psalms, that we should sing hymns, we should sing spiritual songs. We are doing that today. Basically, God is saying it is important for all of you to meet together in here in worship service. Like this is a priority and this is an importance. And we should, we should take it that way. But let me say, let me say this is that God says, let the word dwell in you first. Then it says we should meet together in service. What we're doing when we sing songs, when we read scripture, when we're together in worship, that's a good thing. It's a great thing and it needs to be a priority. But not before finding peace and not before reading his word on your own. Basically, uh, another uh, another. Uh, devotion by Chip Ingram basically says that when you come into service, basically you're just getting processed Gerber food, okay? What I'm preaching to you right now is something that I have studied, that I have worked on over the week, and then I'm giving it to you, okay? But that doesn't compare to what you, what you read on your own and what you study on your own in the Bible. And so here in, in service is very important. It should be a priority, but not before reading the Word and praying on your own daily. And the last thing of obedience this morning that I want to share with you is verse 17. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. And so after we commune with God, after we dwell in His Word, 
and after we worship together, we need to go out into the world and be like Christ. When I was younger, my dad, um, my dad worked all the time. I think that he, he got up in the morning, he went and ate breakfast, he went to work, he worked an eight-hour eight hour shift, Monday through Friday. He would come home and he would work outside or at home until 9.30, 10 o'clock at night. He would go to bed and he'd do it all over again the next day. That's how his dad did things. That's how he did things. Definitely how I don't, I don't do those things. Um, let's be real. I, I stopped that. I broke the cycle. Okay, I'm not doing that. Um, but that's just how he was. And, and so I would be shooting basketball, enjoying myself, and he'd be like, Donovan, come here. And I'd be like, man, I'm going to be working for the next two hours. This is how it's going to be. And so, um, so I worked with Dad. And I was kind of more just like, here, hold this flashlight, and hey, go get the wrench, and get me a hammer, and, um, and, and then watch me do it. That's kind of what it was. I was a gopher, right? And I didn't feel very important in doing that. In fact, I, I'll be honest, I hated it. I couldn't stand it. Um, I was like, what am I doing here? Like, I mean, get you a, a, a lamp stand or something. Like, I, why do I need to hold this light for you? And so I hate every bit of it, but as I got older, what I realized is that my dad just wanted to spend time with me. He did. And that's all that he knew how to do. And he wanted, me to, he wanted to teach me these things as I grew older. And so at the time, I just didn't feel like I was doing anything important. And I was negative about it. And I had an attitude about it. But what I should have been doing was enjoying my time with Dad. And, and enjoying my time and praising the Lord through that. Because the Bible says in everything that we do, do as you're doing for the glory of God. And so something as small as holding a flashlight at 15 years old, I can do and glorify God. And so everything that you do and everything that you say, give God glory for that. Mr. Henry, who is our custodian here, um, daily like comes into my office and is like man I, thank you man I appreciate who you are and he's very encouraging and uplifting to me um, he's, he walks around here and he's, he's singing hymns and songs all the time and he's always got a smile on his face um, I don't know that I'm really supposed to share this I hadn't asked him about this but he had been going through chemo treatments over the last couple months and uh, and radiation treatment and so um, he's, he's almost finished with that and almost done um, and you could tell that this guy was just beat down that Mr. Henry is really just tired um, from all of his treatments and different things, so to continue to pray for him. Um, but also, he'd come in here with a smile on his face. And he's ready to work, and he's ready to talk, and, and he just loves what he's doing. And so that is an example for us. As we go out and we leave this place, that we can, we can do everything that we do for the glory of God, everything we say and everything we do. And so I have a couple questions here for you. And I'm going to ask these questions, and I don't, want to, I don't want you to answer out loud, but if you answer no to any of these things, then you need, we need to continue to work on these things. So how do, we, how do we glorify God in everything we say or do? Think about these questions. Um, is everything that you say glorifying to God? Are you building others up by what you say, or are you tearing them down? Are we loving people? Are we caring? Are we kind? Are we serving people? Are we humble? Are we meeting the needs of others? Do we think about others before ourselves? When you think about those questions, you think about what it means to really do and say all for the glory of God. And so I would encourage you to do that as you leave here this morning. In youth, we always talk about Christianity being, sometimes we, we tell them that it's a, it's a list of do's and don'ts. If you do this, then, then you're setting good with God, and um, if you don't do these things, then you, you need to correct it because God isn't happy for that. And so if we're not careful, our life can be, and our, and our salvation can be about do's and don'ts. Our relationship with God can be about those things. If we're doing, if we're, as long as we're not cussing and we're not saying any bad things, then we're kind of right with God. But that's not how a relationship with God works. It's not of a list of do's and don'ts. The fact is, is that, again, that Jesus came and died for you. He gives you salvation freely. And all he asks in return for us is that we be obedient to him. That we find peace. That we dwell in his word. That we experience worship together 
corporately. And that we do everything and say everything to the glory of Christ. Building up His kingdom. To be faithful. And as we are in the midst of this Thanksgiving season, don't just go through the motions. Don't just give thanks to God out of obligation because it's, it's the Thanksgiving and Christmas season and that's what we're supposed to do. But instead, I challenge you this Thanksgiving season to experience God, to experience peace that passes all understanding, to experience a deep relationship through God through His Word, to experience God in a new way by worshiping together. And to go out in your community and share the love of Christ by saying and doing everything in His name. This season be obedient to God and you will find yourself thankful. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you so much. And God, we are grateful for who you are. God, we thank you for loving us. God, we are all sinful and in need of you. God, we thank you for Jesus and salvation that you bring us through him. God, I pray as that we leave this place, we see it as an encouragement, God, to spend time with you, to experience you in a new way. God, we pray that we are changed from the inside out, from, from reading your word, from, from encouraging and being with other people. God, I pray that we be a light for Christ in this community. Thank you for loving us, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I think we have a, one more hymn left as Allison comes. If you will stand together, I'll be down front. If you would like to, to pray, you are welcome. Um, if you have anything on your mind that you, you'd like to talk about, I'll be here to talk about those things.